Welcome everybody for the last Heidelberg Gastronomical Colloquium of this summer semester. And it's an ex really exceptional honor and um, to be able to greet today's speaker, Professor Zhen Chao of the Institute for High Energy Physics in Beijing. And um, uh, Professor Chao will be telling us about new breakthroughs in detection of high energy photon, ultra high energy photons and actually cosmic ray particles. And um, Professor Chow is being hosted by Felix Aronian and I will hand over to Felix to give the formal introduction. Thank okay. you. So thanks, Richard. So it's my great pleasure uh, to introduce my colleague, the PI and spokesperson of the Lhasa collaboration. Zen Chao. Then, then uh, Chao is a professor. Uh, he represents Hanji, um, Institute of Hanji Physics in Beijing, uh, University of Chinese Academy of Sciences, and Cosmic Ray Center in Chengdu. So it's uh, not far from the site where the Lahaso is located. Um, so uh, Lahaso is, uh, you, I am not going to tell about Lahaso too much, but it's a mega, one is the Chinese mega project in science. And uh, uh, Zen is not simply PI and uh, spokesperson of this collaboration. He was and remains the driving force of this unique experiment. And in fact, to say something more that it, I'm still puzzled myself how you could get this funding for this project because of two reasons, because all previous, uh, previous uh, attempts to detect gamma rays using air showers were not very successful, including the most ambitious one, Kazamiya, led by Jim Cronin. And uh, at the same time, we, we, we know about this huge success of TV Cherenkov, uh, Cherenkov imaging telescopes. So at these consequences to get such a project, it was really not so simple. So uh, if to continue to say to over the last two decades, we have seen two revolutions in gamma ray astronomy. Maybe I could say even in astronomy, one was in the high energy band, GV band, and uh, thanks to the Fermilat, and another one was uh, with Cherenkov telescopes, in particular Hess. I mean, Heidelberg people know about that, of course, very well. Now we are witnessing the third revolution, and to a large extent, that is connected to Lahasa. And as I said, uh, Professor Tsao was. Um, just driving force, and he's still driving force of this experiment. Uh, so uh, what I should add, I think I should not say much, just to say that uh, the Lahaso was designed and, uh, and uh, completed in record short timescales, on record time, time scales. It uh, arrived very swiftly, very quickly, and the first result was simply shocking. So it's not exaggeration, you'll be convinced soon. So finally, what I should say that we are all uh, lucky to have such opportunity to see this shocking results from the first hands. So thanks uh, Zen for accepting this invitation to give a talk here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Felix and uh, Richard. And this is my uh, uh, great pleasure to have uh, this uh, opportunity to talk to the, in the community in the Heidelberg, which is the one of the, you know, the best place for the actual uh, physics. Now, I just take this uh, uh, wonderful uh, opportunity to show uh, the, the, the status of Lasso and also uh, the first result, uh, not only the uh, gamma ray astronomy and also the cosmic ray uh, study, okay? Uh, so my name is Zhen Chao from uh, Institute of High Energy Physics. Uh, currently I'm in Beijing. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to uh, go to the site. 
Um, I was asked by uh, Richard, uh, uh, probably I needed to show uh, some uh, uh, very basic stuff for the non-expert people uh, in the audience. So I just uh, uh, take uh, uh, three slides, just show uh, what's going on with the cosmic ray, what the cosmic ray is, and what we are doing uh, uh, with the cosmic ray. Uh, for the people, uh, re the real, the expert, just please uh, uh, be patient for a moment. So let me start with the, what a cosmic ray is. Basically, uh, the cosmic ray uh, is a charged particles. Uh, normally, it's uh, uh, basically uh, uh, the nuclei of uh, all elements. Um, uh, they must be stable. Huh? If it is not stable, it's already uh, decayed. Okay. So what we saw is all stable particles, uh, just like a proton, uh, uh, helium, and all the way to the uh, ions. Slightly, we have a, a very small uh, portion of the electrons. And also, we have uh, neutral particles like uh, photons, neutrinos. So for sure, all of these particles now we know is coming from outside of the Earth is from our uh, galaxy and also from actually uh, uh, outside of our galaxy. The very important, the feature of these particles is uh, the energy of those particles at a very high energy. For example, we know in, in the main main accelerator uh, in Geneva, we have uh, such a big one called the LHC currently uh, this accelerator is used to accelerating uh, protons. So once we have these protons uh, fit in uh, this uh, 27 kilometer long uh, circle, and then uh, to do the many uh, accelerate, accelerations for these particles, eventually once they uh, heat, uh, glide into together with the energy of 7 keV, this is the highest energy people can do. Can produce. However, for cosmic ray, this energy is easily rich. The highest energy actually is measured in a uh, uh, fly's eye in the old days, um, probably more than 40 years now. Uh, the highest energy we reached is a three times 10 to 20 EV. So this number comparing with this uh, 70 EV around the 10 to 13, you can tell we have a, you know, a, a factor of the 10 to the seven, the difference. So this becomes a very big mystery to us, how these particles can be accelerated to such a high energy. And what is the cosmic accelerator? How it will work? This is, uh, you know, being listed as the one of the 11 most uh, basic questions to us in the physics. So this uh, is selected by uh, American uh, uh, scientists. You know, they make this 11 questions to connect the quark with the cosmos. And also uh, science magazines in 20, 2012, they all also selected uh, eight mysteries in the astro astronomy. And one of that is also this as the, uh, the mystery associated with the cosmic ray. What is the origin and how it can be accelerated to such a high energy, okay? Then uh, to find us uh, where the, these particles are being accelerated, it's not really easy because as I said at the beginning, those particles are charged in the nuclei. So uh, going through so everywhere filled with the, the magnetic field in our universe, those particles can be, you know, go very complicated path once they reach the, the Earth. So we totally lost the direction information about those particles, where it is produced, and we can, if we want to really want to understand what's going on in this, uh, you know, accelerating area. So we have to point back to find the place first. Fortunately, as I said, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, in near the source region, 
there are so many processes can produce neutral particles, photons and the neutrinos. Those guys can give us uh, the idea because they don't uh, be bent in, uh, in the autonomous, uh, in, the, in, the, in the magnetic field. So that's the way, if the particles have been accelerated and hitting the uh, matters surrounding area, and then they will produce uh, photons and the neutrinos. This is the procedure. Then uh, in 2020s, basically uh, this uh, high energy gamma ray astronomy, you know, to try to catch the photons, to try to locate the world of this accelerator should be. And then uh, we go into, you know, looking into that and to find the, uh, the mechanics behind this acceleration. So we basically uh, divided the two, uh, you know, tubes by, uh, uh, by, by, the, by the method of the catching the photons. One is the, by doing this, uh, you know, uh, the chunk of, uh, once the particles get into the uh, atmosphere, they will generate a lot of particles, secondary particles. They generate a chunk of light in the air. And then we can build up this kind of uh, uh, telescopes array to catch the signal. And then uh, to, you know, to figure out to get rid of all the cosmic ray background and the find the photons, and then point back to the direction of the source. So this is the one way to do it. The, 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 the representative of this uh, method uh, is a CTA project in Europe, okay? And the way you can do that in the other way, it is uh, if we put this particle detector on the ground as an array to catch the particles first, and then to use the front of this, uh, we call the air shower, and to find out the direction of uh, the particles which generate this part, this shower, air shower. Then uh, this, uh, you know, the representative uh, is in the Russell now in, in this state. So I will I go details, but just before that, we can see that NASA basically is designed for the surveying and uh, to do the spectral measurement of these uh, sources, okay? This is the aim for this kind of uh, detectors. Um, because uh, the angular resolution for this kind of detectors is not as good as uh, the Chenkov telescopes. So the Chenkov telescopes array basically is doing this uh, pointing observation and can do a great job on the morphology of these uh, you know, sources to figure out uh, more detailed information about uh, you know, uh, what, how the particles can uh, be separated there. So this uh, is a sort of a very well organized, self-organized uh, situation. All those two uh, instruments are highly uh, complementary if they are working together, they will produce a lot of science and uh, uh, should be very, very, you know, useful uh, in this field. Now the situation is that uh, in this year, NASA now is built. Uh, basically, we finished our construction uh, yesterday, and we connected every uh, detectors together, and uh, now we are. Uh, doing the final preparation for the operation. Probably the whole thing will be turned on in the next month, okay? Now CTA, we see uh, quite a good progress as, as well. And then now we saw there is a one, this a big LST detector as operation and uh, the, the, some others are on the constructions already. So this is really good news. In the 2020 years, we will have, uh, well, very great tools to uh, do this job. Okay, now let's uh, move on uh, Lasso story. First of all, let me introduce you uh, this collaboration. This is the, in, uh, the collaboration of uh, 31 institution uh, from China, from uh, uh, Germany, from, uh, from other countries together. And uh, totally we have uh, currently 275 people in the collaboration. 
And uh, a very good news is that uh, now the people in APS France is uh, uh, proposing their project to try to get the, the financial support to join this uh, uh, collaboration. And uh, now uh, the, uh, the relevant study has to do with the you know, different band of the measurements. So we need uh, this kind of uh, collaboration globally with different type of detector as different uh, you know, uh, uh, collaborations. So we already signed the MOU with the Veritas and the Atras and Taurus and the GVD. Those are uh, the neutrino detectors. And this is the telescope for gamma rays. And also uh, many other MOUs are under discussion with the CTAO, with the MAGIC, and also with the ice cube. This one's probably will be truly uh, done and also with the MAGIC one. So this just gives the map of this, uh, you know, this uh, lab work. Uh, that's called the multi messenger uh, astronomy, and uh, I'm sure the NASA is going to be uh, uh, join this uh, team and uh, become so uh, important uh, player uh, for the specific uh, energy range of the gamma ray measurement. So in the, in reality, you see uh, this is an array. Uh, this area is quite a big. Uh, from here to here across is about 1.3 kilometer. And totally we have so many roads inside in this, uh, uh, in this field. Uh, in total, we have 21 kilometers inside. And this road is designed to reach every one of, the, uh, of those uh, muon detectors. One day we may need to maintain, maintain them. So we build all roads there. And from here, you can see uh, also uh, small dots here that are representing this uh, uh, scintillated detectors, okay? Geographically, uh, the site of the here is on the, on the, on the edge area of uh, the plateau, the Qingjiang Plateau. This is the highest place in the world. So that's why we go there because we needed a high altitude to get rid of uh, you know, the absorption of by air. So once we get higher, we can measure the more cosmic rays, but we cannot go much higher because first of all, people cannot go there. Secondly, once we focus the energy range around the PEV and the, the site of uh, at the height of 4,400 is uh, somehow you know, so it's optimized. So the shower maximum is almost reached to the, to the ground. So that makes this uh, measurement more reliable. And here you can see this area is quite a flat. And this mountain is called the Heights Mountain. Heights means uh, lakes. Okay. So there is uh, 1, 000, more than 1,000 lakes in this area. So this mountain is filled with water. You see, many places we have water, which is very important for this site. And also, we have uh, quite a good uh, uh, connection with the rest of rest of part of the world. Uh, from here to uh, uh, Beijing, basically we take something like a five hours of flight. And we, we are very lucky once we selected this site, we know uh, there is an uh, airport actually built nearby. It's about 10 kilometers from there to here. You can see the runway from, uh, from the site, okay? So that's make this uh, site is uh, most convenient uh, probably in the world uh, to reach because basically here is another major city, uh, Chengdu. So we can take the, uh, take the plane from here to here, just 45 minutes, okay? Basically just go up and go down. So this is the site. And then now let's go into the more scientific uh, uh, view of this uh, detector, right? So this is the layout of this detect uh, array. Basically, we have uh, four types of detectors uh, being built in this area. Uh, the, 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 the very important part is the array of this scintillated detectors. 
This is a one meter square uh, uh, plastic scintillate, basically to catch the uh, shower secondary particles in the shower and measuring the time, the arriving time, and also the charge, how many particles fall into this area. So by use of the fibers, guide the nights is go to this uh, PMT and then we can measure this uh, two things. Uh, totally, we have uh, something like uh, 5,200 pieces of this detector uniformly distributed into this one square kilometer region with the spacing of uh, 50 meters. And then uh, we can do the measurement of uh, where enough to catch the timing information for the arriving time of the particles. And more importantly, uh, also uniformly distributed in this uh, uh, field uh, is the uh, muon detector. This is a huge detector. Here's a uh, human beings here. And uh, there's a diameter of seven meter of cylinder of 1.2 uh, height. So we have uh, pure water so filled in with the one uh, uh, photo tubes sitting in the center to catch the uh, chunk of light produced in the water in this tank uh, by muon. How do we get a muon? The muon is a sort of a penetrating particle. Once we have the, this detectors covered by 2.5 meters of dirt, and uh, all other particles will be uh, absorbed in this, uh, you know, in dirt. Only muon can go in through this uh, screening uh, material and uh, uh, into our detectors, producing enough light, chunk of light, and being uh, uh, detected. So eventually, this detector is very clean. Only muons can be, uh, you know, detected here in this detector. And those two guys uh, formed this, uh, uh, the, the, the whole array, and it becomes a very important tool to measure photons. Uh, I will tell you why the muon the information is so important. And in the central part of this array, we have uh, the to in total is 78,000 square meter of water chunk of detector. This detector basically looks like this. It's uh, divided by a uh, uh, dark curtain, uh, making it a five, five meter by five meter cell. At the bottom of the water, the, the depth of water is about uh, four meters from the uh, top of the uh, uh, photocathode to the surface. And then uh, this water can generate a chunk of light as well once the particles get into. But now, because this, this guy's on the surface, everybody, every particles get into this uh, water can produce the light uh, signals to this uh, um, tube. Then once we catch this uh, number of photons, we measure two things as well. Uh, one thing is the uh, number of photons reach to this uh, detector. Also, we measure timing. Now the distance between two detectors becomes so small, it is uh, about five meters. So we need that the timing is rather, uh, is, uh, should be better even for this detector. Okay, so the synchronization of the clock for those detectors are very, very important. And these detectors are uh, 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 20 inch PMTs. By using such a big one, we can catch a very weak signal. Uh, the threshold for this detector actually is reached down to the uh, one third of the uh, photoelectron. Once the photons get in, probably we can certainly measure the one photon level okay, for this detector. To extend the energy range to uh, even higher for cosmic rays, for charged particle co cosmic rays, we built uh, this uh, small size uh, telescope of uh, air Chenkov instead of uh, you know, Chenkov light being generated in water. For this kind of detector, we catch the, the Chenkov light generated in the air. So by using this, we can measure the energy of showers uh, better than the uh, ground ray. Also, uh, we get uh, some uh, longitudinal development uh, information. For example, like uh, the maximum of a shower, uh, the position. We can use those detectors to do it. This is, is uh, the layout. Now let's get 
get into to see uh, more details of uh, of this detectors in you know in the reality. This is is the view uh, before the water just filling. Once the water is uh, filled up, and then the water level will be here. This is basically as a huge warehouse, okay, with the poles uh, and also uh, you know the ground is made by plastic film, and then the uh, you see this curtain is rolled up currently. Once the water is filled up, and then we can uh, roll it down to make this uh, uh, optical uh, separation between cells. And now you can see uh, this uh, one in, inside uh, at the center of the cell, they were setting uh, one huge uh, photo tube here and the small tubes. This uh, big pho uh, photo tube is very sensitive, but it's very easy to be saturated. Once the particles getting uh, the, the uh, photons uh, heating in this area, so we need a small telescope to enlarge the dynamic range of the part number of particles. So by doing so, we can cover uh, quite a good uh, uh, the, the 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 range of the measurements. And you can also see some kind of fiber down here. This is using for the uh, for the calibration uh, for the timing calibration. Uh, in total, we have uh, 3,120 such uh, channels in this area of uh, 78 square, uh, thousand square meter. That looks like this. Uh, they divided it into three pounds, one, two, and three. And the largest one from here to here is about uh, 300 meters. So just look like this. And uh, then uh, this detectors have been turned, up, turned on two months ago. Uh, the everybody, everyone is working well now. The the the, the three thousand uh, cells there. This is an example to show you what is the cosmic ray looks like once it hit here, and this is a shower basically cover the whole thing. This is energy probably reached to uh, something like a ten TeV level, okay, to generate uh, such a big signal. And for this detector, the energy range is from 100 GeV to 10 TeV. More exciting, uh, we have this uh, huge array, uh, 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 one square kilometer away. So we, we, we get the nickname of uh, the KM2A for this array. Now there are two major components as we, 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 we uh, discussed. Uh, there were this uh, squares just represent the electron detectors, just like a, like a one square meter detector, okay? The color just show you the logarithm of the number of particles are being uh, detected. For example, like this guy measured something more than 2000 particles inside this one square meter, okay? This is red stuff. And also we have the circles to re represent the muon detectors and also using the same color bar to show the number of the muons ahead inside this muon detector. And uh, now you can see why this muon detector is so important. We just uh, measure this muons, okay? For the showers, if it is generated by a lo uh, ordinary co cosmic ray, then uh, they will produce a lot of muons in this uh, shower. You see so many circles here, and the, the number, the, the, the color of this uh, circles becomes large, for example, like this, you know? So that gives you the idea, many muons being, you know, generated in this shower. In contract, you can see uh, this is uh, uh, something else. This is the one, the similar size of the event, you can tell this part of dense part to compare with this part, but this, shower looks quite different from this one, just because we have very few, the muon detectors being hit. See, only uh, 11 of those guys being, being uh, registered, okay? So that gives us a very important handle for gamma ray generated shower, they produced very few muons. So if we just uh, simply count this, uh, uh, the, 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 the ratio of the muons detected versus the number of electrons measured by this, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, scintillator detectors, then we can tell uh, which one is photons, which one uh, is uh, ordinary cosmic rays. That's it's very important. If you can really, if you really want to do a good job, you need this uh, muon content measurement uh, should be as good as uh, you know uh, we need, it. because the uh, number of muons in general is something just like a one tenth of the total number of shallow particles. So eventually, we reach uh, such a big muon array with one thousand and uh, 188 muon detectors built with the spacing of the 30 meters uh, from each other. And then the, the, the active area coverage versus the, the whole area is about 4%. So that is the very uh, crucial number to make this uh, detectors uh, wonderful for gamma ray uh, detection. And then here, uh, so very glad to announce it. This, uh, yesterday, you see this is the live uh, uh, recording. Uh, yesterday at uh, seven, uh, seven, hour, uh, seven o'clock, 20 minutes, we have a total number of detectors of the 5,181 uh, being connected to this uh, DHU system. So this is a very exciting time for us. This detectors basically can cover a wider energy range for higher energy part as well. So starting from 10 TeV to 10 PeV. This just uh, to show you uh, what I just explained uh, by using this uh, muon information. This is the total number measured. This is a simulation uh, uh, of the showers. This is a total number of muons by uh, count uh, by using this uh, muon detectors. And this just showed the total number of electrons uh, detected by the scintillator uh, detectors. And then uh, you can see uh, the gamma generates the shower and the proton or even heavier uh, uh, cosmic rays uh, showers is quite different, okay? If you can do a simply cut for this uh, you know, ratio, um, number of muons versus number of electrons, this one versus this guy, and uh, being less than one over 230, then you basically get rid of uh, all cosmic rays for the energy higher than the, for, for example, like a 50 TeV. So reach to this, we call the background free regime. And uh, you know, we can do the simple photo counting. Uh, for, for giving uh, the, the exact number here is that for the 100 TeV shower, the this cut can get rid of uh, 10,000 of cosmic rays in the one degree, uh, you know, space, uh, space angle region. And uh, at the 500 TeV and above, this ratio becomes uh, 10 to minus five. So this is a very powerful uh, uh, measurement. And uh, this number actually, we this is the, uh, the real, number we measured by using this detector for cosmic ray flux. And this is the number of the party, uh, cosmic rays after cut to compare with the, crop, the, the photon flux from the crab. So basically we take the one degree surround the crab region and you see uh, the number of the photons from the uh, from crab is certainly higher, one order of magnitude or more uh, uh, than the background, the cosmic rays re re remaining. So that give us a very good measurement of cosmic uh, for gamma rays. Okay, the third part of this uh, detector array uh, are 18 telescopes uh, with the five meter square as the collecting area of a uh, chunk of light generated in the, in the air. So this detector is originally designed just for the cosmic ray measurement uh, but uh, you know, in the night time, these detectors were open, and then uh, if the gamma rays uh, just shoot into this direction, of course we can detect this uh, uh, photon events as well. Um, for example, like this uh, very famous uh, event from uh, Crab Labula, around one TeV uh, energy, and uh, these detectors 
uh, first of all, being recognized by this uh, ground array. Uh, as I said, there were 11 uh, muon detectors being hit with uh, 15 muon uh, real muons. And then uh, that gave us a very good handle uh, with the uh, chance probability of 0.1% being mis uh, identified as a photon. And then uh, uh, by chance, there is a one telescope just looking into this direction. You see this one, this particles uh, uh, shooting uh, our detectors. And this is the imaging just uh, took by uh, this uh, telescope at that moment. And this gives us a very uh, unique cross-checking inside of the one collaboration to see if we do good job on this measurement of this gamma rays. Um, if we use this telescope to do this measurement, we get the energy at 0.9 PeV uh, with the uncertainty of a 0.2 PeV. And uh, by using this ground array, we measure the energy at 0.9, uh, also the PeV energy, but this guy's better you know, uh, at this, for this kind of event, uh, accuracy. This uh, uncertainty is about 0.1 p. And to uh, check the performance of uh, our detectors, we're using a uh, Monte Carlo uh, because uh, this is an easier way, uh, particularly for uh, gamma ray astronomy. This is a very uh, a wonderful tool and easy to uh, calculate for showers uh, uh, being detected by these detectors. And we found uh, the arrival direction, we can measure with the resolution about 0 0.26 degree. As I mentioned, this is not uh, as good as uh, the Chenkov detectors. Chenkov detectors currently can reach 0 0.07 or 6 degree. So it's uh, uh, four times better than this uh, detectors, okay? But uh, this is good enough uh, to do a sort of morphology for uh, for the for the for the uh, for the sources, and uh, the good thing for this detector is that we can detect the shower locations very well. Even we have uh, 15 meters as a spacing between these detectors, but uh, once we have uh, so many showers uh, particles to be measured, we can get uh, the accuracy of the co-location down to something like the three meters. Okay, this is the uh, measurement, and also. Uh, we can do this uh, angular resolution measurement uh, by using this uh, 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 simulation tools to check. And you see, uh, uh, we really reach something uh, below the 200, uh, 0.2 degrees at a very high energy range, for example, like a PEV. Uh, here, uh, I can show you there are some kind of uh, uh, zenith angle effect for very kind shower the measurement becomes uh, slightly worse. Uh, you know, this uh, green uh, points. But for high energy particles, that's fine. Finally, we need to measure the energy. Uh, for the gamma ray energy, that is uh, very easy to do because uh, you know, the shower is a pure uh, electromagnetic uh, cascade proce procedure. So this uh, procedure is supposedly uh, well understood. So we can use uh, uh, um, very basic theory, for example, like this uh, NKG function to describe uh, the lateral distribution of the shower particles. This is, a dis this is a distance from the core, and this is the density of the particles in the, in the shower. So once we have the, the measurement of this, uh, you know, nicely uh, along this uh, NKG function, then we can use the density of particle density at 50 meters from the from the core to as the energy estimator. So we get a very linear response. This is the uh, reconstruct the energy by doing this. And this is the, the, the thrown energy we just put into in the simulation. So you can see uh, this is a rather good response function. At an energy around 100 TeV, um, we have a very uh, a symmetric dowsing and uh, uh, resolution function. That is uh, something around 14% uh, as a resolution. We can do the measurement. And uh, once again, we saw this kind of zenith angle e effect 
for the energy resolution, this becomes more, uh, you know, severe. So for the very declined shower greater than 35 degree, we uh, the, basically this energy resolution becomes worse by a factor of two something, right? Uh, for this water chunk of detectors in the middle uh, of the array, uh, we can we can do the same thing, but now we see a, a sense of uh, better. We use uh, the uh, the crab unit uh, the 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 crab uh, labeler as the, the standard candle to measure the the location to the pointing uh, for our detectors, and also we can test uh, the you know the angular resolution directly measure this uh, point light source. So for the different uh, energy range, this is a size energy of the size number of a detector being hit. You can see this changes with the energy as well. Once the energy getting higher, we have a better uh, resolution. That's for uh, very, uh, uh, you know, obviously to see. And uh, this, uh, if you translate it into a one dimension, then uh, you can real measure the number of this resolution. Uh, at the low energy is something around 0 0.4 degree, at the high energy uh, reach to the 0 0.2 degree. Uh, this detector, uh, we equipped uh, this uh, water, big water pool by using this uh, 20 inch PMTs. Um, two of the three pumps are equipped by this uh, big one that basically uh, reduced the threshold energy from the original design with the eight inch PMT down to uh, much lower. For example, at the 70 TGV, this sensitivity reached to the one uh, Fermi detector. So that enables us to uh, measure the uh, short uh, phenomena, this trans transient phenomena, for example, the GRBs and the AGN flares uh, that give us the handle to join this, uh, uh, you know, to, uh, to do the multi messenger astronomy by using this part of the detector. And then uh, for the test, uh, we use uh, the stand candle. This is the uh, very famous uh, crab labella. This is recorded by Chinese uh, ancient, uh, you know, so we know the exact day, which days this uh, the supernova was uh, explored. And then uh, nowadays, uh, after 1000 years, this becomes our, uh, you know, Labella, the crab labella here. And uh, this guy is well measured and uh, people know this very well. It is very small uh, from here to here is uh, something around just 11 uh, PC. Basically to us, it's a very, very small point. So this is just the point, very good point source. And uh, then we can use it to check our point accuracy. For example, like for this cam 2 a we're using uh, uh, something around one, more than one, more than one year of data. We reach the pointing accuracy. This this guy is less than a, a zero point one degree. It's very accurately uh, pointed, and also we measure the size of this uh, the, the bra, and then we can get the angular resolution. That, that is about a zero point twenty six degree. And this is imaging is produced by the shower, the, the photons with the energy greater than 25 uh, TeV. For the central part, we have this big water pool. And then we also use something around one year data. We get uh, uh, the pointing accuracy measured. Uh, also, um, actually it's much less than 0 0.1 degree. It's something around the 0 0.03 degree level. And uh, the angular resolution is, uh, you know, you can tell from here to here, the size of the spark is a smaller. So this is the number. And for the energy range of this guy is greater than one TeV uh, photon. Uh, further to check, we use uh, this uh, crab labella because, uh, you know, their uh, spectral energy distribution has been measured by many experiments historically. So here we list the seven uh, uh, experiments in the, in the past. 
they measured the, the energy range all the way from uh, uh, tens of TeV to 100 TeV already. So we use this part to check I will detect if they're working together uh, correctly with the other experiment. So this uh, blue square just measured by our water chunk of detectors in the center. And also the, 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 the red squares represent our measurement all the way uh, to the one PV uh, by this chem to a uh, array. So very importantly, once again, because we have this uh, two kind of uh, uh, measurements uh, together in the, in, the, in the same area. So we can do the, the cross check at the 12 uh, TeV energy, uh, both detectors measure the, those part of the shower. And then we can see this spectrum is connected very well. Okay. So this is the, uh, our check. But very importantly, uh, the Crab uh, is not only uh, the, uh, the, the standard candle. For the high energy part, uh, you know, let me go back. For the high energy part, uh, for all of the 150 uh, PeV, so almost only a uh, uh, loss uh, produced in the measurement for this region. So very, uh, with the spectrum just extended all the way to the PeV with the measurement of the 1.1 PV uh, uh, photons down here. And this uh, just give us a very clear information about this point source is a pavatron. Um, probably we, 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 we can uh, discuss more about this uh, pavatron uh, because there were a very clear origin uh, of this uh, source. This is a well-known uh, pulsar wind nebula. There is a pulsar in the center. So because this is the very uh, uh, clear source, so we, people can do a, a wonderful job to just by using a very simple uh, uh, assumption with the electrons being accelerated in, the, in this uh, small region. And then uh, uh, to uh, assume some kind of the ma magnetic field inside. And then we can fit all the spectrum from uh, 10 to the fourth, EV all the way to 10 to the 15 EV. So it's more than 10 orders of a magnitude being uh, you know, illustrated by this uh, model, uh, rather, rather good. So before the loss of state becomes available and uh, you know, this model is called as a one zone, very simple electronic origin. Uh, it's very good, explained everything almost, okay? This is amazing to, uh, uh, for this uh, uh, field. And uh, above the 50 TeV here, you see this, uh, our new measurement seems to be slightly off from this uh, wonderful model. And uh, also at the highest energy part, seems to be the, sh the shape of the spectrum looks slightly different from the, the trend of this model, okay? And if you count it carefully uh, by, by this uh, error bars, and uh, this is something around the four sigma a deviation from each other, okay? Uh, the very wonderful things, of course, is this uh, very highest uh, energy uh, around one PeV. Currently we have two, one is the 0 0.9, another one is a 1.1 PeV. By using those uh, PeV uh, photons, we can certainly tell um, there is a, a extreme, ex electron accelerators in the center of this region, okay? With a very small size, there's a less than 0 0.025 PC uh, in the core region of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, this uh, crab labula. And uh, uh, if it is, uh, those guys are, if those guys are produced by electron and then uh, the electron energies must be as high as the 2.3 PV. And this gives us a very a surprising, uh, uh, very high accelerating efficiency of 15%. Uh, you know, this number looks not so uh, 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 big, but uh, this is already a, a fact of thousand 
uh, stronger than the LOMO, uh, uh, supernova remnants uh, shock wave we can do, okay? So this, you know, because this kind of uh, shape and the deviation, probably people can argue this is not a proton, uh, this is not produced by, uh, by, by, by electron, maybe there are some other things. So of course, with the error bar just like this big, we cannot uh, totally rule out the proton origin of this, uh, uh, these things. However, if we can, we can prove this is a proton, then uh, this gives us uh, the wonderful result as well. This is the, the, the origin of the cosmic ray, which is uh, you know, the main topic of this uh, uh, field uh, we, are, we, are, we are working for. So these things can be, uh, uh, you know, within a two or three years being uh, clarified because, uh, you know, according to our uh, calculation, we know we have uh, one or two photons uh, at such a high energy will be, uh, you know, collected by this detector. So just uh, 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 stay tuned, just look at for this uh, within a two years. Not only for that, uh, the loss of, uh, in the last uh, one year operation was the, even the size of uh, the half of the, uh, you know, the capacity of this detector array. This is the uh, live part for the last year. And uh, we found another surprised high energy uh, photons at the 1.4 PeV. But this is from uh, the other, other direction. And uh, to check this event, we found and this event was even less muon, you know, but the larger uh, number of the electrons being detected. So that gave us an even stronger, uh, uh, you know, rejection uh, uh, of the cosmic ray background. By doing this uh, ratio, this versus this, and actually we get rid of, uh, we could get rid of uh, 3.7 millions of uh, long photon events. Um, giving uh, you uh, have this 1,000 event measured in this direction above 1.4 PeV, this uh, you know chance probability get even smaller, is at 0.03 uh, percent uh, being misunderstood uh, identified this 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 event as the photon. So this is the very clean measurement. So this guy is coming from uh, the Cygnus region. Uh, together with this guy, actually we found uh, uh, totally we have uh, uh, 530 this kind of UHE photons. What the UHE means is ultra high energy, which is uh, I don't know, above the 100 keV uh, photon. And then uh, if you make the map uh, of the sky, you can easily see those guys line up with uh, our galaxy which means uh, those guys are actually inside of our galaxy. And uh, totally we have 12 of them. Actually we have more because we uh, set the even high, very high standard for this measurement. Uh, instead of a five sigma, we use a seven sigma as the threshold. So if we reduce this number down to five, we have longer list of these uh, sources as well. And also we have the very uh, clean measurement for this because we know this is the background of ray by uh, using this card, we have the rejection rate is already for this 100 keV above greater than uh, uh, 10 to uh, smaller than the 10 to minus four. And uh, even more interesting, you can see that all of this list is not, uh, is not uh, completely new. Most of them actually is known uh, by represented by this circles. The circles are uh, all long uh, PEV sources. So only few of them, for example, like this guy is new one, but any others are actually uh, are, 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 are long sources. So you, you have a sort of idea, but not exactly, but you know what kind of uh, the sources there will be. So this is very in interesting. You find uh, many types of the, the sources could be the, you know, the candidates uh, of this uh, 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 pavatrons, of this 12 pavatrons. 
uh, this is a very uh, interesting uh, result to, 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 to get. And if you look, uh, this, uh, uh, the, the most bright, the, the, the most, uh, the brightest sources of, uh, all, uh, out of this uh, 12 sources, and uh, there are, uh, you know, we measure the spectrum for those uh, uh, sources. The very uh, surprising, su surprisingly, you see there's a spectrum and just all the way go to a uh, uh, ultra high energy regime now without any indication to show this cutoff effect, okay? Uh, only few of them, uh, I forgot exactly one probably is this guy, uh, uh, this guy uh, it's a, had a sort of cutoff feature. Otherwise, it's just a very, you know, uh, very strong extension to the high energy part. So that gave us a very strong information. Probably this is the way to really to get the, the, the you know, to find the cosmic ray uh, uh, accelerators. So basically this is the onset of the gamma ray, uh, the UHE gamma ray astronomy. Um, now you, you see, uh, for example, like this source, uh, NASA J1908, uh, you see uh, this, uh, we have uh, quite a good coverage already in this energy range above the 100 TeV. So um, this, the nozzle can provide this uh, very statistically uh, significant coverage in this range, not only for this source, but for many other, you know, very important sources. So we can do a good job on this, uh, you know, uh, to, to try to understand what is the origin of this uh, accelerator. And we can do uh, the energy resolution, as I mentioned, is uh, so something around 15%. And uh, the morphology, uh, sort of a morphology, for example, like this, you see, at uh, the 0 0.3 degree level. But, uh, you know, we need the better stuff to measure this better. Okay. Okay, this is about the uh, gamma ray astronomy. And uh, now let's uh, uh, shift to uh, uh, charged particle of cosmic rays. This is my favorite topic. So, you know, we built this detect uh, with the multiple uh, type of detectors in the array. So that enables our uh, measurements for many components of the shell. That is a very important uh, handle to try to understand what is the ident identify, what is the origin of the shell. So for example, here I just give you we use uh, uh, this uh, WCDA in the, in the water pool here, or this uh, scintillator counters to measure the front of shower. Okay, that gives us uh, the, uh, the, um, the very accurate direction of the shower at the level of the 0 0.2 degree. We also use the water pool to measure the energy flux in the center of the shower by using this WCDA, we know the, 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 the shower is within the five meter, the cell, and the plus uh, the labeling cells, we can tell the, 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 the core at the you know, accuracy of the two meters. We have this muon detectors outside of the pool, we can measure the muon content because uh, you know, the muon distribution is much wider than the uh, uh, electrons. So we can do this measurement with the dynamic range from one muon all the way to the 10,000 muons for each detector. This is a huge dynamic range for this detector. So this is very useful. And then we can use this uh, telescopes. Now the telescope is open and then you see uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in this way. And then we can measure the shallow maximum location with the accuracy of a 40 gram per centimeter square. So this is, you know, all of this information is very important to do the identification of the particle, uh, the, the origin of the part of the showers. And then uh, eventually we can use this telescopes to measure the energy and the shower energy with the uh, uh, accuracy or something around the, um, 15% or even better. So currently we have uh, 18 mirrors to cover the whole atmos direction. This is a real event. Uh, you can see. And uh, the zenith angle 
is something uh, around the four, 45 degree, okay? And the, one of the good feature for this kind of a combination of detector is that we can real measure the energy scale. You know, for the normal experiment, uh, um, the high energy experiment, you have the tester beam, for example, at the CERN. You build your detector and the braille detector to the beam and test it. And then now you, you know your response to corresponding to what energy of the in, uh, incident particles. But for cosmic ray detector, you don't have this kind of stuff. However, very luckily, we found that the cosmic ray actually blocked by moon. That generates a sort of a deficit of this cosmic ray flux. Okay. And if the if you know the particle is charged, for example, like a proton, and then uh, this this guy will be shifted, the, sh the shadow of this, the, the moon will be shifted by the magnetic field. So we can accurately measure the shift of this uh, moon shadow and uh, to know what the energy of this uh, particles generated this uh, shadow. So basically we're using this uh, WCDA which has uh, 0 0.2 degree uh, measurements of the each event. And then they give us a very good accurate accuracy to measure the, the shift of this uh, imaging. And then uh, at the high, at the energy range from a six to 30 TV, we will measure this uh, you know, shift. And then we know what the energy of this cosmic ray is. Unfortunately, now even with such a beautiful sh shadow, we can still uh, have only a 30% of the uncertainty for this kind of measurement that's dominated by statistic of this one. Once this guy is getting higher and higher statistics, uh, uh, you know, uh, events, and then uh, this uh, number will reduce down to 10% uh, within four years of a measurement. So then eventually we can reach this, okay? This uh, under, you know, 10% of uncertainty. This is uh, this is a dream basically for this uh, field of people. And then uh, this uh, scale of the energy measured at as high as a 30 TV can propagate it to uh, this uh, water chain up uh, to the air chain of telescope, okay? By using commonly triggered events. So this basically, this is a real event measured by uh, this uh, uh, chain of telescope. And this is uh, measured by the water pool. You can see they agree with each other very well. And then they use this uh, measure the shadow energy scale, put in here and here, you can see we know our energy scale being, being fixed. That is very extremely important. Once the, in four years, this era bar will reduce down to this small, okay? Then I get a very accurate, uh, you know, calibration of the, of the, of the, of the shower. And then uh, we use the, the, the sort of high tech of the silicon PM uh, as the, uh, as the, as the pixels of this, uh, camera and uh, now you see uh, this uh, uh, this camera and uh, by using this uh, silicon PM basically allowed us to run our detector with even full moon here you know the moon is uh, such a high and uh, the, we just uh, get uh, this uh, you know uh, the, the background the high and it's not high enough we can still use it to do the measurement so eventually we have a quite a large dynamic range by using this uh, detector. And uh, this site is not as bad as we uh, thought. Eventually we reach something like uh, 14 hours, uh, you know, uh, 1400 hours per year to, 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 to run this uh, de detectors, okay? That give us a very good uh, coverage of, uh, of, the, of the cosmic ray measurement. Eventually, uh, we can, by using this uh, four uh, parameters, and we can, pure, uh, you know, selecting pure protons out of the all cosmic rays with the uh, aperture of the 1,000 square meter of steradium, just like this, you know, above the 100 TeV, that's just basically flat. It's the size of the, you know, water pool here. And then uh, if you re re relaxing a little bit of the cut, you get this, uh, 
proton plus helium uh, sample with uh, such a big number to be measured within uh, 750 hours. So we can do a very nice job to see the need of the proton, pure proton spectrum, uh, which have never been done before. And also we can do that by using the whole array uh, to measure even higher energy part for the, uh, the, 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 the need of the ion spectrum. For example, like if it is uh, uh, optimistic, uh, this number could be a 24 T, uh, PeV, then uh, this, uh, you know, the expectation uh, will be done uh, by three years, reached to such a uh, nice measurement of the knee of the ion. Or if this uh, the pessimistic, if this uh, knee is higher at the 50 PeV, we need a lot of three years to make this kind of measurement. Anyway, this is the way eventually we found, you know, the proton knee and also probably get some information about the helium knee and eventually in six years, we certainly we can get the knee of the ion. They will give a very important information, uh, you know, about the cosmic ray, uh, at least for the propagation in our galaxy. So that's all. So I don't, I don't have to, uh, probably I don't have to uh, go through uh, all of this, um, leaving that uh, for the question part, okay. Well, thank you very much for this very comprehensive overview of this remarkable step forward in sensitivity and these remarkable results. Now we're I'm running over time. So I'm gonna postpone uh, all the questions until the informal question and answer session, which we will do immediately following this colloquium. Um, before we thank our speaker, I would just like to make a couple of announcements about uh, the Heidelberg uh, colloquium in general, as it's the last colloquium of this semester. Um, and I need to share my screen to do that, which I shall do now. And um, first of all, I would like to thank um, all the speakers this semester for providing us with state-of-the-art information in, in, a, in a form which is completely understandable. And I'd like to uh, thank the Institute representatives for helping to um, uh, set up the program. It was actually a very easy program to organize. And of course, uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the community in Heidelberg for their input into setting up this program. Um, next, I want to say that uh, the Cloco will be available on YouTube. Uh, at, at the moment, um, uh, Branislav Avramov is doing this and we're up to Peter von Dockham and in a couple of weeks or two or three weeks, we should be th through with everything. Now, most important of all, I'd like to say something about next semester. Um, we hope that we will be back into the Hursal. There may still be restrictions, this remains to be seen, but we hope to be actually physically inviting speakers to Heidelberg. And therefore it's especially important that uh, everybody in the community here is able to put in suggestions for topics and speakers. And I would ask you all if you could then send an email to your institute representative with a few words of why uh, of, of suggestions and why these people you think would be very good people to invite. And I've listed the Institute's uh, representatives below. Um, I'd like finally also to thank um, uh, Branislav for, for the videos and also uh, 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 the staff at MPI-K, um, and Stephanie Kolb for the uh, IT, and also um, uh, Francesco uh, um, uh, uh, Conte and Yufan Wong for helping out with the organization. So now, without any further ado, I'd invite everybody to open up their microphones for this remarkable project. And 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 and, um, and colloquium. Thank you very much.